Okay, so this is problem 14.43 from Fundamentals of Electric Circuits and calculate the resonant frequency omega naught of this following RLC circuit. So when you have an inductor and a capacitor, you're going to have some sort of oscillation. The critical frequency is when you achieve resonance or when the frequency is, uh, the critical frequency is equal to the dampening frequency. So in a circuit that's not at its critical frequency, you're going to get a graph that looks like this. Whereas if you have a circuit that is at critical frequency, you're going to get like a much nicer sinusoidal kind of wave. And the way we can find omega naught is by writing down the impedance or the admittance of the circuit. And remember that impedance is Z and admittance is 1 over Z, which is equal to Y. And Z is just kind of like the resistance, but of components such as inductors and capacitors, not just resistors. So we can set the imaginary part equal to zero, and then we can find our resonant frequency. So then now we can start um, writing down our equations. I normally like using admittance because it takes away a lot of the algebra, but you can use impedance if you want. So the first thing we want to do is we want to write this circuit in the Z domain. So the way we would do that is that we would, for a capacitor, this would become 1 over j omega c. The inductor would become j omega l. These are just the rules for a capacitor and the inductor. And obviously, the resistor would just remain r. And then, so now we want to kind of solve the circuit. So we can tell that the inductor and the resistor are in series but they're clearly not in series with the um, capacitor because of these two terminals here. So then they're in parallel with that capacitor. So this is a general circuit. So you can't um, follow the formulas that you would normally follow, to follow for a pure series or a pure parallel circuit. So then now we can write down a formula. So one over Z would be equal to, actually before doing that, we can just write out that R plus J omega L is in parallel with 1 over j omega c. And then, um, so that would mean that 1 over z equivalent is equal to 1 over r plus j omega l plus 1 over j omega c plus 1 over that, right? So then you get 1 over z equivalent is equal to 1 over r plus j omega l plus j omega c, right? Because you want to take 1 over each of these uh, parts that are separated by the double line. And then rather than just finding z, we can just keep it like this because remember the admittance is equal to 1 over z equivalent. So now we can just write that y is equal to 1 over r plus j omega l plus j omega c. And that really simplifies our algebra a lot, right? Because if we had to find the z equivalent, we would have to set this to the power of negative 1 and just do a lot of unnecessary algebra. It would just basically be 1 over this whole thing. And it just, the finding the admittance eliminates a lot of the algebra. And then now we want to set the imaginary part equal to 0 in order to find the critical frequency, but right now because we have an imaginary number in the denominator, we want to get the out denominator. So then we can just multiply by the complex conjugate. So this is equal to one times r minus j omega l over r plus j omega l times r minus j omega l, right? And then we come over here, plus j omega and we can simplify this so that this is going to be equal to r minus j omega l over, you get r squared. Remember multiplying these two just cancels out. Then when you multiply these two, you get the negative of a negative, which is positive because j squared is negative 1. So plus omega squared l squared equals y. So now you can easily find the, um, oops, plus the J omega C equals Y.
So now we can see from over here which part is imaginary. So we know that this part is imaginary. So you just want to keep that. But now we need the denominator to be the same for both of these terms. So then what we want to do is we want to do r minus j omega l over r squared plus omega squared l squared plus j omega c. We want to multiply the numerator denominator by this term, by this um, equation, r squared plus omega squared l squared over r squared. So now we want to, again, we want the imaginary part to equal to zero. So now we can circle the imaginary part. So the imaginary part we have here is we have, this marker doesn't work. So we have an imaginary part over here. We have an imaginary part over here when you multiply these two, and we have an imaginary part just over here when you multiply these two, right? This entire top is just imaginary. So then uh, what we want to equal to zero is we want negative j omega l plus j omega c r squared plus j omega omega squared you're going to see why i don't think these omega cubed in a minute uh c l squared over r squared plus omega squared l squared equals zero so now because this is equal to zero, you can just multiply this on both sides, right? So you would get a one over here and you would get zero over here. So you can just get rid of that. And because all of these have J's, you can get rid of all of the J's too. So you can say goodbye to this, goodbye to this, goodbye to this. And then as you can see, like all of them have omegas, which is so you can get rid of this omega, this omega, and this omega. See, that's why I wrote omega, omega squared. So now you're just left with the function. Um, negative L plus CR squared plus omega squared CL squared equals zero. So now if we want to solve for omega squared, you would just, it just becomes algebra at this point. So I'm just going to do that really quickly. So you get CR squared plus L, then you can divide by um, or sorry, you can uh, subtract a CR squared. So then you get R squared CL squared equals minus CR squared. Now you can divide both by CL squared. So then you get omega squared equals L over CL squared minus CR squared over CL squared. Now we can simplify this, so omega squared equals 1 over LC minus R squared over L squared. And you can take the square root of both sides. And then your ultimate solution that you end up with is omega equals the square root of 1 over LC minus R squared over L squared. And that is your final solution, and this is the value of omega naught.